is your vista into the world of medicine, meaning which we are letting you get to the field of medicine, like getting you closer to the field of medicine like never before. Now this session is going to be something known as an orientation to life in life sciences. Now before we go any further, let me tell you at the outset that Medics 2012, the entire exhibition by itself is a career guidance program. Meaning which this is a small 15-20 minute program, we cannot deal into everything. But there are every speciality and super speciality that have put up a stall out there. So if you are interested in that field, go to them and ask them how did they get there. What kind of lifestyle do they need? What are the hardships that one faces in that field? Because like I said, this entire medics by itself is one huge career guidance. Uh, let me first introduce you people behind this. We have Dr. Binu Joy, whom, we cannot, whom I cannot see here right now, but he is the Associate Professor uh, and in the Department of Radiology. Uh, okay, saying hi from the... He is busy taking photographs right now, but he is the person whose vision and dream it was to have this career guidance program. We have two very smart young men from uh, the third term of uh, MBBS, Nayan Pinto and Kevin. Uh, who have helped us formulate this module based on student perspective and I am Dr. Nitin Yashas, just finished MBBS and now currently doing my internship at House Surgency in the same hospital. So, uh, Kevin. Right. So, uh, we just, before we even start off with this session, we'd like to tell you guys that this session, we're going to just be putting a lot of questions in your mind. And uh, these are basically some of the questions that you need to ask yourself before choosing your career. Now I know a lot of students here are in 9th and 10th and we have some from 11th and 12th. Am I right? Yeah? Okay. So this is a stage where you really need to understand yourself so that because you are making a choice of a career and what is a career? It's something that you do for the rest of your life. So these are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself. Now I chose my career without knowing any of these questions and I was just fortunate that I happened to like the career I chose. But looking back now, I think it would be really worth, worth it for each one of you to ask yourself some of these questions that we'll be highlighting on. Before that, how many of you have decided here what you would like to do in the future? Okay. And how many of you have not decided and you have absolutely no clue what you have to do, what you want to do? You can raise your hands because even I was in that state. Wonderful. So this session is for every one of you that you need to dis that you know always teachers keep asking you questions in class. Now after this session you go back and ask them some questions that we have asked you and help you to find out the answers. This is your time to get revenge back on your teachers as well. So this is the time. So this session is all about making you aware of what the right questions are and what questions you need to ask. And uh, I just forgot, we have some students here from Mount Carmel College as well. Thank you for joining us and supporting Medics 2012. Right. So first of all, where do I begin? I mean, there is so much information on, around us today. The web, you go on Google and you get so much information and you're not even sure whether it's relevant or not. So right at the outset, we'd like you guys to start asking people in your profession. Let's say you want to become a doctor. Then go around and talk to people. Talk to doctors. Ask them what their life is all about. How, what do they do every day? Do they like their lives? And things like that so that you get to know more about it. Make sure, there's another point about accessing all the information that you have. Make sure you go to how many other people you need to, to get what you want. Because if you feel that, okay, here's an area where I'm interested in, then make sure that you have asked other people who are in that field, who are more experienced than you, ask them what, what made them, how did they get there, what, what drove them to do this, and, and that will, in a sense, build in a passion for, in yourself as well. The most important question to ask yourself is, where do I see myself 10 years down the line? What do I need to be 10 years down the line? What kind of lifestyle would I like to be living 10 years down the line? Thinking into the future is not a bad thing, especially at this point in time because like Kevin said at the beginning, a career is essentially what you are going to do your entire life. So it's very important to uh, ask this question yourself that what am I going to do 10 years down the line? Now at this stage, there is a very important question that comes up in mind. How much weightage do I give to peer pressure and parental pressure? Now, do I do a subject or a course just because all my friends are doing it or do I not do it? 
just because of the fact that I want to be different. They are all doing something. I need to stand out of the group. That's why I want to do something different. Or how much weightage do you give to what your parents want you to be? My parents want me to be a doctor. My parents want me to be a software engineer. These are the questions. Now there's a rationale behind each of these things. There's a reason that always a group goes behind one thing. And that's the reason that you need to give weightage to that. There's a reason that your parents want you to be something that's because of experience, that's because of their vision of how they want you to be or a lifestyle you want to be. So you need to give some amount of consideration and need to incorporate these thoughts before making a decision. But more importantly, the most amount of weightage you need to give yourself is what would I like to do. And the key word here is what would I like to do. Because you need to choose something that you like and not just do it because your parents want you to do it or because the rest of your friends want you to do it. Continuing on with that, this is actually a period where you need to look at yourself and see what are the things you'd really enjoy. Because like for example, when I was in 11th and 12th, I decided, okay, I'm going to do engineering. And I actually went for coaching classes for two years for, to prepare for an IIT exam. But finally when I wrote the exam and after that, I just realized, okay, I'm not meant for engineering. Which is why I decided, okay, maybe medicine is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I told you, that, that, that is why my choice making was just all over the place. Which is why we are here to make, make your choices a little easier, so that you can ask yourself the right questions and make an easier path for yourself. Uh, before we go on to this slide, since the 9, we have a range of 8 to 10 here, I'll just focus on them for a little while now. Now when you are in your 9th and 10th standard, the question of doing a plus 2 or a PUC comes up. So you need to, you basically have four options. You can either do PCMB or you can do PCMC or electronics or you can do arts or commerce. Now if you are really, really sure that you want to do arts, commerce, go ahead and do it. If you are really sure that you never ever want to get into the field of life sciences as a doctor, if you are 100% sure that you do not want to be a doctor, then choose PCMC. But if you have still not decided what you want to do, then do PCMB. The reason being, if you do PCMB, you get a lot of flexibility at the plus 2 level, uh, even after plus 2 as to what you want to do. Because even after doing PCMB, you can still get into engineering field if during those 2 years you realize you like mathematics, you like computers. If you do uh, PCMB and have English or you suddenly discover that you have a flair for language or like languages, you can still do art. Or if you suddenly organize a cultural fest in your college and realize you're good in administration, you're good in handling monies, you can choose commerce after the plus two level. If you have made up your mind and if you really know the answer to what you want to do 10 years down the line, then choose any of the other streams. But if you do not know what you want to do and are still confused, then the suggestion or advice would be to take PCMB because that gives you a lot of flexibility. Just to add a small note on that, uh, this is again for the 9th and 10th standard students. I'm sure a lot of you are having a problem deciding whether you want to do PUC, ISC or CBSC. Now, uh, that would really depend upon what you want to do. Like for example, in PUC, they mainly look at the objective nature of subjects. They will look at pinpoint answers to specific questions. Whereas in a, in a, in a stream like uh, ISC, you have, um, you, you go into a greater depth in all of the subjects because be, having done ISC, I can tell you that from personal experience. And uh, what, uh, what a lot of people think is that ISC really doesn't help you to, uh, in entrance exams, which is partially true. But uh, seeing the state of entrance exams in our country, we don't know what exactly is going to be the format as yet. Um, it's, it, it really doesn't seem to matter what, what syllabus you follow. But, um, what I'd like to say is that when you choose a subject, keep it, keep what you want to do in the future in mind. Like for example, if you're ultimately looking at doing a pure science subject, then a, 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 a more wholesome stream like an ISC would help you. But if you just want to get on to something like an engineering or an MBBS, um, then that, that choice is ultimately left to you. Uh, now when we think of the word medicine, we only think of MBBS, but uh, we are here to tell you that there are a lot of other associated streams under medicine, ranging from pharmacy to dental studies to biotechnology, genetics, nursing, physiotherapy. The fields are multiple and uh, as we go on through the slides, we'll just be enlightening on a little bit about these fields which are not so widely mentioned. We'll start talking about what is widely perceived as the holy grail, which is medicine. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said that, that this is the role of a doctor, basically declare the past, diagnose the present and foretell the future. Now there are a lot of questions which come about medicine. 
But the primary question is that how long is the course of medicine and do I get to study uh, and what do I get to study? Now everyone will tell that medicine is such a long field. There's 10 to 15 years of study. You know, when I wanted to get in, they told me that you're gone, man. You cannot handle medicine. I mean, you're loafing around in cultural fest in MCC, JMC, taking part in debates and all. You're not going to become a doctor or when you become all that has to just stop. And you're just going to come out of your room only after 15 years after studying. This is where I would like to bring Dr. Binu join here. He's Associate Professor of Radiology. I just want to ask him, sir, what was the journey of MBBS like? How, how long has it been and was it a burden that it was long? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's, that's a good question, often asked question and it's one of the popular perceptions that it takes a long, long time to actually, you know, finish your medical studies and come out and start working. Uh, there are two ways to it. Yes, it's pretty long. Uh, rapidly talking about what I did, I did my MBBS four and a half years, followed by house surgeons, which was one year. Then I worked in the villages for two years, got back and did my post-graduation for three years. Keep counting. <laughs> so by the time I was about 29 and uh, from then I've been working. So see, one way to look at it is, oh, this chap took such a long time to finish studying and start working. I mean, my God, about 12, 13 years of, of just all this. I would look at it a little differently. I was a finished product as a doctor by the time I was 23. I was, it was my choice to do a post-graduation and I did a post-graduation. Let's say you don't ma have much of a choice, you anyway have to do post-graduation. Nevertheless, you are already a functional doctor by the time you're 23. From that time onwards, actually, you are, you are treating, you are working as well as studying even if you're doing a post-graduation. So my way of looking at it would be that I have been functioning as a doctor from the time I was 23 rather than from the time I, I was 29 or 30. So that way it's fine. That is, I mean, it's just that when you look at other fields, let's say, uh, oh, he's, he's 22 and he's already started earning. That's true. But that's the basic course which they finished and they started earning. If they had chosen to pursue academics and move on, they would have worked for a little time, gone and done an MBA, gone and done a master's in software or whatever, and they would have taken a, an equally long time there. So I would say it's all about perspective and uh, it's, and the time. You, you perceive as wasted is never a waste. You're always functioning as a doctor but after that. So I would always say, I would take it 